Hi guys, thanks for checking out this video. I've come out this afternoon just to try and target some bass on the lures. I've got a selection of lures with me today, which I'll give you a quick look at in a minute. Um, it's ideal conditions, so uh, wind behind me, so these surface lures should be absolutely flying. And uh, the sea's fairly flat as well, so um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice conditions. Um, the only thing I will say is it's, uh, the tides aren't the greatest today. Fingers crossed we can get sight and, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the afternoon before last night. So the rod I've got with me today is my uh, HTO Nebula. Uh, it's the uh, 15 to 56, uh, 10 foot um, lure rod. Um, and I've fitted that with a uh, Penn Spin Fisher 3500. And it's loaded with HTO Nebula braid. Um, and that goes all the way up to a uh, 22 pound uh, rubbing leader. And then uh, I've just got on there a Savage Gear Lore Clip. So, um, yeah, that's the uh, setup that I'm going to be using uh, this afternoon. Um, I'll give you a quick uh, run through of some of the lures that I'm going to be chucking out as well. Now, I have probably brought too many lures out with me, but considering I'm not using my uh, lure vest and I've got my rucksack with me, um, I've, I've brought out a uh, box of hard lures, a mixture of hard lures, um, some metals like some seekers, um, and some of the uh, sand deal pencils. Um, some surface laws there um, and then a uh, mixture of uh, like hard laws uh, I've even got a deep diver there for uh, since I've um, been fishing on the kayak I've, uh, I've actually started to uh, quite like having a deep diver with me um, but yeah like a, a quick selection of hard laws so some shallow divers there um, some subsurface laws there the uh, kagaloo and the uh, tackle house feed shallow got a tide minnow in my box um, these two uh, colours here uh, being my favourite actually so uh, yeah probably use them this afternoon at some point if the surface laws aren't going to plan and then just a uh, selection of softies I bring with me um, it's mostly the uh, mega bass spindle worms uh, rigged on some uh, uni universal jig heads um, some savage gear sand eels uh, some fish minnows and stuff like that uh, some weedless uh, minnow laws that I've got there um, and these uh, new weedless laws, uh, JJ minnows, I think they're called, if I remember rightly. A couple of them. And uh, pretty much the same on the other side. I just got smaller um, versions. So I got the uh, smaller versions of the uh, Mega Bass spindle worms there. Um, and so, some of the, uh, like the uh, X layers, I think they're called. Um, some of them on some smaller jig heads, like 10, 15 grams. Uh, for when I've got my lighter set up and uh, the uh, a range of sidewinder laws as well so uh, if I want to fish a softy over some snaggy ground these things uh, stay quite um, quite nice mid-water so uh, there's no risk of getting snagged so uh, when I'm fishing over reefs like I'm stood on now as the tide goes up then uh, these should come into their own and uh, become quite handy to have so yeah that's the uh, sort of laws that I take out with me that's uh, like default I just grab them too I can't go wrong chuck them in my uh, law bag and off I go but I think this afternoon I'm going to start off with the Astori 130 I think the conditions are quite flat at the moment so I'm going to be trying uh, trying that and uh, seeing how I go with that if that doesn't uh, go to plan then I've got the uh, Pachinko 140 the 125 smaller Astori and a uh, Frosty as well which I wouldn't be without the fish are a little bit further out that's why I've got the uh, Seekers there and uh, some of the uh, pencils as well just in case hopefully we can find one on this though um, throughout the session uh, it'd be nice to get one on the uh, bigger top water this afternoon so i'm using the uh the story at the moment this uh exorus the story uh the 130 and uh, one thing i noticed compared to the uh, other top water laws is this one can dart under the water and do its own thing pretty much on the retrieve but I find to get the best action from it me personally I like to do little circles with the rod tip tiny little circles with the rod tip as I'm reeling in and uh, either doing that with the rod tip raised or just the rod tip lowered um, and I find it skips along the surface it does tiny little tight zigzags whilst it's doing that um, without having a dart under the water and stuff so if you want to keep it um, on top of on, on the surface as you're retrieving it um, without it 
um, darting under, uh, then uh, try the uh, little circle motion that I mentioned in there. Um, that seems to work pretty well for me. It absolutely flies as well. Um, it's like an absolute bullet casting this thing out. Um, there's a little bit of chop today, not much, but uh, I thought I might chuck out this lure and just see if uh, there is any uh, decent sized fish out there that are willing to come and smash into this story. So just doing my uh, little circles with the rod tip. That tide's starting to run quite nicely now, so uh, where I'm actually uh, casting my lure out is uh, probably making its way down tide about 50 feet um, as I'm retrieving it in, so I'm casting back up the tide. There's a little bit of wind um, this afternoon, so I'm going to keep the rod tip fairly low. I find you get less hassle doing it like that when it's a bit windy and uh, your surface law doesn't get start getting dragged with the wind uh, if you've got the rod tip raised then the uh, the braid gets caught by the wind sometimes and it just messes up the action of your law so I find if it's a little bit windy just keep the rod tip down and just impart your action and uh, yeah everything seems to uh, just fall into place really this lot. There we go, absolutely smashed. Whoa, out of nowhere. Woohoo! I think that's what, third cast? Oh, oh. oh, it's a little one. Tiny, the way you hit that. <laughs> wow, absolutely smashed it. I thought it was going to be three times the size of that. Well, I'm hoping to find some bigger fish out there this afternoon. I'll be uh, a little bit gutted if uh, if this is the only one that comes up in the session, but I'll take that for a uh, for a blank saver, that's for sure, on the uh, story. Well, there you go, pretty much uh, straight away on the uh, story there, like third cast in, I think, and he absolutely smashed it. I don't know if I've got it on camera, um, on my uh, chest cam. I think I might have had it lowered a little bit, but uh, this fish absolutely hit it. Well, what I'm going to do is just put him in this uh, little pool that seems to be filling up. But, uh, yeah, he's not not a big fish at all, is he? And uh, he's just slammed a law, top water law, the Story 130, um, which is pretty much half the size of him. Um, but he really hit it, I thought, when he hit that, the splash he gave off couple of splashes in fact um, he looked like he'd be a three four pound fish but uh, he might have been foul hooked when he hit it because didn't know I've put up a, a little scrap to start off with I'm uh, quite embarrassed actually that I was uh, making such a big deal about it but yeah what a cool little bass he's just gonna chill in there for a bit he might even go out with the uh, tide that's there but this pool's gonna fill up soon and uh, I'll be uh, getting pushed off this reef so uh, I'll need to move back but Hopefully I can get a couple more before that happens. So guys, um, probably about an hour and a half in and only uh, that one bass to show for it, the mist hit on uh, a couple of the uh, follow-up casts. 
apart from that everything else is uh, it seemed pretty quiet but uh, it's starting to get round to that time I like now um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, chuck on a uh, pachinko 125 because that winds dropped a touch but um, I'm thinking maybe something with a bit of splash um, and something a little bit less subtle um, in comparison to the uh, pachinko 140 but I shouldn't need the uh, distance on the uh, on the cast now to get the uh, the lure out there uh, so I'll put on the 125 um, and give that a shot um, and hopefully uh, we can get another bass There we go. We're into a fish. Hey. <laughs> Don't think he's that big again. Oh, it's a garfish. <laughs> it's a foul hooked garfish. Only a little one. <laughs> I knew there was a few of these around. Little garfish there. I want to unhook him without touching them because they bloody stink. Oh, he's actually hooked. Oh no, I'm going to be full of scales and my gloves are going to stink. Oh, he's actually all right. I thought he was hooked in the eye. But hopefully, he goes off all right. Oh no. Oh no. Come on. Oh no. And look at that, that's why I don't like garfish. I might just grab him and uh, take him for bait or something. I thought he was going to go back because he's only pierced behind the gill. Wash my hands first. There we go, that will make a, a nice bait at some point. Bloody rubbish. Rubbish fish to catch, because especially if you're out just having a, having a, a little bass session and you hook into one of them, they just bloody stink. Smelly scales that go all over your law rod. <laughs> I'm not going to moan if I get a couple of them now. I've got a carrier bag with me. Uh, in my law bag so uh, yeah fresh bait for the kayak I guess well guys that's the end of the video um, I'm going to uh, knock it on the head there but uh, I hope you enjoyed that video uh, if you enjoyed the video then hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel that would be much appreciated take care and I'll catch you in the next video